Hello everyone, this is Jared Beyer again. Uh, this is going to be COVID 2.0 Part 2. This is a three-part series I, I put together as a slides presentation regarding a follow-up to the COVID presentation I did last year uh, prior to vaccines and whatnot coming out. So this is Part 2 of my presentation called Where We Are Now. Uh, so this is the most up-to-date information on what's happening now with COVID and where we're at and restrictions and whatnot. So let's start off here. So again, as I go from uh, slide to slide, I will say next slide as we go along. So let's start off. So where we are now. First off, so attention active members, active members to earn credit towards LMHF Wellness Program Part 2. You must watch the video, video in its entirety and email Mia to receive your wellness credit. So this is a three-part series. Part two, where we are now, where are we now, uh, is really focused on the most current things. Obviously, right now, things are changing very quickly, as they have from the start of this, uh, in terms of information, what's been released, and what you, know, what you need to be aware of. It's very overwhelming. I mean, this has been probably the most difficult presentation to put together, so I had to break it down into three different parts really try and figure out how to take all this information and break it up into smaller bits and pieces. Um, so again, this is where are we now? So number one, let's talk about information sharing. With the information coming out on this 24-7 news cycle, it's hard to really determine what we really need to pay attention to and what we don't. Obviously, if you're watching the TV, it's, it's, it's all over the TV and pretty much people are pretty sick of it. Uh, social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, there's just so much information there, whether it's true or not. Uh, obviously, as we know with the internet, there's a lot on there that is not true and, and really fact-checking is can be quite time-consuming in finding the right sources. Um, memes, always fact-check before you share a meme. I mean, there's so many memes out there with maybe, I mean, you see these memes with... Uh, some famous person and some quote. And if you look th look it up, the quote doesn't even go with that person or they didn't even say that. So always be aware before you share. Um, there's so many podcasts out there and they're just really focused on ratings and selling products and things. So be really careful. I mean, there's, there's a lot, a lot of misinformation out there, probably the most on COVID and things like that because it's been so politicized, dividing in, in what's been said. So finding the good inf right information is really important and not making assumptions by a person told you this or you heard that. Again, that's more that just playing the game of telephone and losing uh, the real meaning behind what's going on. So if you look at websites, obviously there's so many products out there they're trying to push to help, you know, cope with COVID and things like that. So just be aware. Don't you know, don't, don't buy things that, that are not proven. Obviously, there's been a lot with different supplements and things like that and devices to different types of masks and things to, to reduce uh, your chance of getting or spreading COVID. Uh, video sites, obviously, there's been lots of censorship uh, on social media with people posting things and, and, you know, stating their opinions. And the main thing with an opinion is you know, do you really value that person's opinion? Or are they qualified to discuss something like that? There's so many celebrities and influencers that are, are giving their opinions that are so off base and just ridiculous. So I'm not really going to discuss too many of the conspiracy theories and things like that. I'll talk about some basic things that, that we can work off. But really, there's there's just a lot of junk out there. So censorship is allowed on social media platforms as they're all private. They can pull your channel. If you have a YouTube channel, they start, you know, promoting whatever, um, whether it's good or bad. I mean, your opinion really doesn't matter when it comes to a social media platform. If you're speaking out against company or something like that, it's very easily pulled and reported. So you have to be very careful on what you say, um, especially if it's misleading. Okay, on the next slide, we're going to talk about misinformation. So again, we have a lot of this left versus right politics and blue and red states. And, you know, there's no politics in science. It's, it's what people have tried to control and, and manipulate. So this whole divide and conquer approach is actually, unfortunately, quite effective. 
When you try to split people into an us versus them, you then can market to those people and direct them to do things that you want. There's plenty of coincidences that happen in life, but people seem to think that these coincidences may be a conspiracy theory, that this happened because of this or that. And, you know, there might have been some here or there, but there's way too many things that are people have drummed up based on almost no facts at all, or one fact that then created this whole story about what might have happened. So it is easier to fool someone than to convince them that they've been fooled, which is quite true in this day and age because people are constantly led in a certain direction. And when you try to, to tell them that this or that is not true, they, they think that you're part of the conspiracy against them. So obviously we see this more and more in the media these days with people that are strongly, you know, focused on one or more things and Maybe they're, they're totally untrue. Uh, this is just ridic the ridiculousness of especially the U.S. and what we see and what really takes our focus. Um, and obviously there's a science to all this stuff. And it's, it's unfortunate that, that people are, are misled so much in terms of what they should or should not be doing and trying to get them you know, to do certain things. But really, who's behind this stuff and, and what is benefit to them. So again, we've been overloaded with this, you know, COVID information and it's just, it's really, really difficult. I mean, we're, we've been facing a situation that's affected everyone's lives around the world that we cannot come together and, and work on. So there's just been this huge divide and split um, and a lot of selfishness in this. So this us versus them is something that has created more and more problems and has prolonged this problem in, in effect. So trying to get away from things and people that are really, you know, these, these loud voices that are trying to make these big deals about things and, and create problems, try to really avoid that stuff as much as you can and really just focus on the right information. Now, when we look at like the CDC and all this, you know, these, the government, there's been missteps, there's been misinformation, there's been things that have come out that they've gone back and, and changed. But again, that's part of science. Science is, is an experiment. You're trying to figure out nature. So it's not a cut and dry answer. And sometimes we find things out after the fact that we maybe didn't know going into it. So that's been a big thing is the learning curve in this whole pandemic and having the government involved, sure, definitely slowed things down. I mean, the government tried to do what they can, but getting the government on the same page is pretty much just as impossible as getting people on the same page as the public. So it's a very difficult situation. And obviously, when we're trying to you know, make progress on things and, and people are just not working together, and there's so much of this divide, we're going to have problems. I'll just discuss some basic conspiracy theory type things. So there's too many to really talk about, but let's just talk about safety. So are a lot of these things that, that are being promoted safe? I mean, a lot of these home remedies and things, and there's just been some ridiculous, ridiculous things I don't even want to discuss that have come about. Um, but really the main thing is who's making money, right? I mean, if, if, you're an, uh, if you have a podcast or something and you're trying to, to be this shock jock type person and create this following of people that, that believe in you, they're probably going to spend money on the products you're promoting or, you know, donate to your whatever, you know, funder challenge you're trying to do. So there is a lot of money being gained by people that maybe have a voice and are using it just to line their pockets or influence someone. So a lot of this comes from influencers. So really influencers, care about their numbers, really not their followers. They want more and more followers. Now, a lot of these followers are actually bots. So if you see someone that has several million fans or followers, a lot of those actually are bots. They're not even real people. But when you see something like that, like, oh my God, 4 million people follow this person. They might be, must be saying something pretty important. And it's not like that. It's all smoke and mirrors. But the question is who benefits from that stuff? Influencers make a ton, ton of money from people trying to promote a product because they know they have an audience. Even if that audience is only 2 million out of 4 million real influencers that are not bots, they still can promote something, 
pretty simply by shooting a video of it or talking about it or hashtagging it, which companies will pay big money for because they understand how social media sells products. So really look at who benefits. Where is everything, where is everything going? Where's the money going? And that's how you can really understand and break down a lot of this information. Now, again, there's, there might be a tidbit of true information in a conspiracy theory that has now been twisted and turned, and now other people have jumped in on this approach, and they know someone that did this, or they heard that, and it just spirals out of control. It's just it's just a problem. It's, it's just a waste of your time. So the next slide, we'll talk about gambling with your health. Now, this goes more to the fact of... <clears throat> Should you be vaccinated? Should you not be vaccinated? What's your current health? Are you in, in an at-risk category? So number one, people that are 65 and older are 81% of the deaths from COVID-19. So age is the number one factor. So if you're 65 or older and you're not protecting yourself, you are at risk, you have chronic illness, you really need to, to look at being vaccinated. It is your own personal choice. Don't let anyone influence you. Look at yourself. Make your own decisions, and that's what it's really going to affect. So if you have a chronic illness like high blood pressure, uh, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, all these different things, these are things that are predominant in the United States. That is why we've had such a problem getting rid of COVID because people in the U.S. are not healthy. They have chronic illness. They're, they're struggling with many issues. So if you're already struggling with your health and then something like this hits you, it could end your life. Um, if you have emphysema, asthma, COPD, or if you're smoking or vaping, vaping is worse than smoking cigarettes. And this is a long, this is a respiratory illness. So if you're already struggling to get air and you have a respiratory illness, what happens? You don't live long. If you have cancer, kidney, liver disease, immunocompromised, these are all different things that we have a ton of in this country. The other thing to look at is the people around you. So if you have a family member, caregiver, somebody you work with that has these issues, you can easily spread COVID to them, whether you're vaccinated or not. That doesn't really matter. That does not stop you from getting COVID or from spreading it. The vaccine is to help keep people out of the hospital. So it is not, there's no fail safe cures for these things. These are just ways you can more accurately or, or hopefully keep yourself out of the hospital and, and survive this. So don't gamble with your health. These are important factors you need to look at when it comes to your risk factors for surviving this. And not just this, but life in general. So changing your lifestyle is very important to improving your risk factors. The next slide, we'll, we'll talk about keeping others safe. Again, like I mentioned, if you have, if you don't have those issues or those pre-existing conditions, but you live with someone that does or work with someone that does or as a neighbor that does or go to a social event where someone that might have those things, you could spread it. Where is the compassion? Where, where do we draw the line at? I would feel bad if I passed something to someone and they had serious health issues or they died from it. That's one big thing we look at in this country is that we need to take uh, other people's welfare into, into our, our minds and really focus on that. I mean, there's been so many stories out there where you know people went to these social events and the people that end up getting sick and dying never even went to those events. They never even attended a party. Because, again, as we look at COVID, people are going to be contagious without knowing it and bring those things home or spread it without knowing it because they are asymptomatic. That is one major thing with this virus that's totally different, again, because if you feel sick, you're probably going to stay away from other people. If you don't feel sick, you're probably not going to modify your behavior. So that is a key when it comes to looking at this virus and how to really keep yourself and others safe. On the next slide, we'll talk about some of the vaccine facts. So again, it does not cure anything. Uh, it does not prevent you from getting it. It's meant to keep you out of the hospital, reduce your symptoms, reduce your power load, and hopefully reduce the chance of spread. 
there's a lot of information still coming out in research to, to see how, you know, vaccines really are helping. But they are not, you know, yes, there are people that have died from vaccines, but they're probably already sick. They maybe already had pre-existing conditions. The vaccine likely did not kill them. There are, with every drug and pharmaceutical out there, there are some people, which is a very small percentage, where it might really do harm to them to the point where someone might die from something, from, from a, a reaction to a drug. But these are not the same things as drugs that you're taking repetitively over time. This is a you know one shot or two shot, maybe a booster. These are not the same kinds of things. And all these you know uh, conspiracy theories on you know vaccines are, are, are meant to, to kill off the population, make people sterile. These are total they're, they're total shots in the dark. They are just not what you want to really get yourself involved in. So be aware of these things um, and the facts behind these things. Obviously, you know, drug companies are, are producing this information and they do have reduced liability, but if they didn't, if they had all this liability on their shoulders, they would not produce this stuff in mass. So the main thing to look at is that with a vaccine, you are not, you're not bulletproof. You can still get COVID. And it doesn't make you more likely to get it, which some people have said. Um, it does not cure COVID. There's no real cure for COVID. It's got to go through your system and your body builds up a natural immunity to it. So what the vaccine is really doing is just giving you a heads up and giving you the ability to produce antibodies to fight it if and when you get it. And virtually it's been impossible not to come in contact with it in some respect over the last few years. So be aware of this stuff and understand that they do not cure or prevent. The next slide will talk about the two main types. So deactivated would be the older type of Johnson & Johnson. Uh, the mRNA type, which would be Pfizer and Moderna, uh, they've been the first time they've been used on a mass scale, but thus far they've been highly successful. So when we look at other things in terms of vaccine production, most vaccines and drugs are actually produced in China and India. Now with the supply chain issues, there obviously were some serious issues in getting drugs and whatnot over. Um, one of the things that happened in India, which was an interesting story, was that basically uh, they were producing it, but they weren't really able to, to use it because they were a poor country. So the rich countries got to make and produce the vaccines and give them out to people and had surpluses. But the Indian, uh, India was not obviously a poor country. So what they actually started doing is they produced their own vaccine very expensively and distributed it themselves and did a great job in reducing the spread. Obviously, there's a lot of things in India with the overpopulation and sanitary conditions, which can, can really create a big problem there. So they went ahead and they produced their own very inexpensively and did it themselves instead of relying on a rich country to actually give them the vaccines and help them out, which is another big debate in terms of the U.S. having, being a rich country and giving some uh, vaccines to other countries or selling them whatever they're doing um, to the point where now we have this massive surplus where people, you know, we're trying to convince people to get vaccinated where other countries where people want it, they can't even get it. So hopefully that's, thing, that's something that's slowly changing over time, but obviously it's a very important part of, of, of keeping, you know, the balance in, in trying to get rid of COVID. Uh, so next slide, we'll talk about natural immunity. So this is going to be what happens when you either get COVID with a vaccine or without it? It's basically your body's response to, to building up a database of how to fight this virus. Now, obviously, the virus is going to mutate and have different strains, and you could get COVID more than once. I know several people that claim that they've gotten COVID more than once, and that can likely happen. I mean, people, just because you get a vaccine or you've had it doesn't mean you can't get it. Again, especially if it is a different variant. Obviously, right now, uh, Omicron is very uh, predominant. Um, so it's a new, you know, it's it's gone down the list of different mutations and whatnot. And you, if you had Alpha, you could easily get Omicron. So it's 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 a bit different with the mutations, 
Um, it has been apparently been moving a bit away from the spike protein, which was used for the initial vaccines. So, you know, maybe the antibodies have gone down, you weren't boosted, but there's a lot that can really happen with that. But the main thing is natural immunity is something that is very powerful. Um, we really need to focus on uh, developing as much as we can our immune system so that if we do come into contact with COVID, that our bodies are strong to fight it off. Now, if you have a lot of those pre-existing conditions I've talked about, you definitely want as much as you can to help fight this stuff off. Um, there's a lot of things out there when we talk about people um, avoiding vaccines and whatnot. And if you've had COVID and you survived it, you have an immunity to it. That immunity can last quite a long time. You don't have the exact numbers on how long that stuff lasts. Um, in my research and my belief is that natural immunity is the king. It's the most powerful because there's other things, like I say, in science that, that we don't understand how these specific mechanisms work. Our immune systems are very complex. So if your body produces this and, you know, creates these antibodies, it's much more powerful than having an injection of a spike protein, which the virus uses, um, which is only one part of it. So there are things that we're learning over time. This is obviously going to be a big learning experience on the effectiveness and how to develop more and more, you know, vaccines and medications using this technology. But again, don't, don't, you know, natural immunity is very, very strong, and that is nature working the way it should. Okay, in the next slide, we'll talk about herd immunity. So this is something that was brought about for quite a while, um, talking about how if, if enough people were vaccinated and or had gotten it, that we would have this quote-unquote herd immunity, so it would kind of like reduce the spread of COVID and slow it down and eventually get rid of it. Well, one thing to look at is we are not getting rid of COVID. It's basically here to say it's been found in uh, domestic animals, wild animals, water supplies. Uh, you know, it, it's found everywhere. Not in a water supply to where you'd be drinking it, but sanitary water, like in our, you know, uh, disposable water and things like that. So it's it's really everywhere um, because we've obviously it's spread all over the world. So. Herd immunity is something they talked about trying to get to this herd immunity point if they had a certain number of people being vaccinated and or people actually contracting it and their bodies creating this natural immunity. One of the issues with that had been not enough people were getting vaccinated and these mutations were going or were happening because not enough people were basically fighting it off. So mutations naturally happen, but they can, because of this prolonged time that COVID's been around, it's mutated more and more, which is, again, you could get COVID more than once. So these are things that, that we talk about. Now, actually, there's a lot more talk about herd immunity happening because enough, a large enough percentage of our population has gotten it, uh, whether they're vaccinated or not, whether it's natural immunity or through a vaccine. So this is something where obviously we're looking to move this more towards an endemic state instead of a pandemic. So it's something that's slowly coming down. Uh, we're seeing a lot less hospitalizations with Omicron. So it's really something that is, you know, hopefully on its on its on the tail end. We've had all these ups and downs and waves of these different variants, but this hopefully is is the end of it. I know everyone is sick and tired of, of hearing about this stuff. Okay, so now we're looking at lifting restrictions state by state, county by county, town by town. That's one of the other big things which was really kind of crazy about keeping everyone on the same page is that the government could say one thing, but the state could change it, or the county could change it, or the town, or the business. There were so many variables that no one was really on the same page. So it's a red state or a blue state, and just trying to paint people a uh, picture as us versus them. Uh, mass restrictions here in New York State, or at least in the Buffalo area, obviously have been lifted on uh, public businesses. Travel restrictions are starting to lessen. Uh, there's still a lot, obviously, when you're traveling to have to use a mask and you know, all these different visas and things you need to travel. 
Uh, right now, 63% of U.S. citizens are vaccinated. And then on top of that, obviously, you have people that have had COVID, which have immunity to it, which is above that. Um, and I see some of them might have been vaccinated or not vaccinated. Uh, likely schools will be the last to uh, take away the mask mandate uh, because right now the vaccination rate for kids is below 40% in the U.S. Obviously, there's different categories with teens, preteens, and five and below. And that right now, there are no vaccines for five and below. So that likely will be something that will be last to lift. Hopefully, after this break, we will have some change with that in the schools, but that's a whole other topic and subject uh, with masking of our children. So uh, restrictions are being lifted. So this is something that obviously is, is happening and it is a state by state or county by county thing. So be aware of that. And obviously things can go back to where they were. We've had that happen before. So people have let their guard down way too often. So we have to really be careful not to do that and still be careful um, and do what we need to do to protect ourselves and others. So this is the end of part two. So thanks for listening. Hope you learned some stuff in this presentation and hope everyone is healthy and doing well. And part three will be coming up next, which is kind of the future of what we're going to be doing. So thanks for listening and hope you're well. Take care.